And we're live. We're live. Hello, everybody. Hello, and welcome, or welcome back. Welcome, welcome back. It's all the same. It's all the same. I'm Jenny. I'm Paul. And we are Go Box Art Crate. And for those of you just joining us for the first time, we teach painting classes step by step. And you can buy kits from us or even a subscription box. We provide all the supplies, and then you get to join in on these fun tutorials and paint along with us. Yeah, let us know if everything sounds good, everything looks good. I'm getting a little warning that the the bit rate is for the internet connection is a little slow, but I don't know if that's affecting ah, anything. Happy St. Patrick's hey, Day, Kim. Happy good to St. see you. Happy St. Patrick's Day. I wore my green. Did I you wore wear... my green. Uh, wait a minute. That counts. Okay. Okay. My uh, green sweater I have is kind of an obnoxious green, and uh, yeah, I just kind of felt like... <laughs> So we're sounds actually, good. Great. Okay, yeah, we're actually great. actually we're trying something a little different with our equipment this this week in that uh, we're actually in stereo. So you should be hearing mostly me from one side and mostly Jenny from the other side. <laughs> oh like my gosh, fancy. you're getting so fancy. I know we're so <laughs> high tech here. So let's go ahead and zoom in and we'll talk about let's what we're it. painting tonight. Here we go. Oh, starry, starry, starry night. night. Yeah. So this is a. Uh, our replica of Van Gogh's famous painting. His probably took him weeks and weeks, maybe even months, but we are going to do this in about an hour and a half. So this Actually, is Actually, knowing what simplified. we know about Vincent Van Gogh, he probably did it in like two hours. Maybe. Do you remember he did like <clears throat> something like four or 500 paintings over the course of two years? Yeah. Remember? Yeah, yeah, so. yeah he did. So I chose Starry Night. Um, we actually picked our colors before doing our paintings this yeah. month, which was, it's kind of a fun challenge for us. And it also helps us to maybe think outside the box a little bit. Yeah. And uh, I painted a lot of different things. I will tell you, I probably did four different paintings before I settled on this one. And I was going to do a Luna Moth, but it, it just didn't turn out looking super great. That one I might do again someday um, using a template. This green is really good for that. <laughs> yeah. But it, I think it's one that would definitely need a template because of their shape. But I did decide on Starry Night, um, and I thought it worked out really good because... This month, it is Van Gogh's 170th birthday. Wow, that's amazing. March 30th. And uh, yeah, so we'll get to honor Van Gogh and also have a lot of fun with this. I have taught this one so many times in a live setting, and it's really easy. There are some components of it that I will show you what not to do so that you can stay right on task and not go off and uh, end up with some mistakes that I noticed right in the very beginning when I first started teaching Starry Night. I headed people off after after my first class, and I realized everybody was mm. making these look like feather boas. Yeah, <laughs> this yeah. guy is like, okay, I need to word, whatever. however I worded the teaching part of that, I need to change it up. Yeah. So I've got it dialed in now. And our colors this month, we have pretty, a pretty fun palette. No black. We've got cobalt blue, bright red. We've got our daffodil yellow and green apple and white. So we're going to do some mixing. Our black that we're using this month is basically dark purple made with these two colors. Wow. And the whole sky is very vibrant. It's got a lot of movement going on. And that's one of the things that Van Gogh did. His paintings almost look like this particular one. It looks like the sky is like turning and churning and he's got a lot of little uh textural brush strokes his actually our texture what i yeah. had read about van gogh is some of his paintings were half an inch thick from the canvas so he probably pretty much had relief carvings <laughs> which is super cool and uh yeah we're gonna do that we're gonna mimic that with our brush strokes and color so i'm gonna set this aside i will reference it again now i've actually taught this one too yeah, you have. You have. Multiple times, but without, we're not doing the city. Did, did, I'm trying to remember, did we ever do it with the church? I think all we ever did was like the church. Oh, mm. you're crunching ice. Sorry. Oh my gosh. Sorry. I forgot there's a microphone right under my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. Oh yeah, Kim's having a little time lag. That's totally fine. We'll, yep. we'll, we'll, uh, we'll read your words, text. <laughs> let me translate for Jenny. Her <laughs> translation is basically deal with it. <laughs> no. So let's take our biggest brush. Okay. Go ahead and dip it in the water cup and just brush it back and forth. What do you mean deal with it? Yeah, I I'm never just say kidding. that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know, I'm wondering. Dry it off on the towel. How many newbies are, are in, like new people are yeah. in tonight with it being St. Patrick's Day? Yeah. Um, you know, St. Patrick's Day didn't seem like it had any hype this year at all. Hmm. 
Yeah, it didn't really. Well, yeah. but maybe it's saw. Okay, so let's take our biggest brush. I've, I've uh, wet it down, dried it off. Let's dip it in the cobalt blue. What I like to do first is start with a horizon line way down here. So the top two-thirds of this canvas is sky. We want to leave a lot of room for sky, less room for ground, because this is called Starry Night. It's all about the sky. So let's, from this bottom left corner, let's jump up about, I would say it's two and a half inches, right about there. Just make a mark. And we're going to do this sort of rolling hillside, so it's not a real dramatic. It lifts, we do a higher lift over here on the right later. So just do something like this. It all gets changed. And, and now it's just pure blue, right? Yep, just pure blue. And we're going to paint from this line upwards. Paint okay. the whole entire top of the canvas cobalt blue. Now, if you like to have some darker patches in your sky, you can. I know Paul will do this. You can. Uh, you can throw some red in here too. Now you know I'm not going to. <laughs> I know you too well. And you can load this on fairly thick. But you also don't have to. If you want to conserve your paint and maybe do another project, with, well, you do have to do another project <laughs> with it next week. But you can do a lot more projects. I've actually gotten like four projects out of these paint bottles. Okay, you're on right. On this size canvas. I'm adding a little bit. I knew you would do it. You couldn't resist. Resistance is futile. <laughs> So I think that fun thing about this particular painting is obviously if you are new and you're just learning and this is one of your first paintings with us, yeah, this is a good one to go ahead and just follow along. But I think those of you who have been around and been painting our paintings with us a little bit more, this is a fun one to kind of play with the colors a bit or don't you think? Definitely. I mean, because we're, we're painting a replica of, of, of one of the greatest masterpieces of all time. We're not going to perfect it. No. So go ahead and put your spin on it. Yeah. So like I was saying with the red here, I'll show you what it would look like to add that in. Here. I would just use, oh, I already dipped my brush in a little red. I just picked up a little bit on the corner and you'll just brush that in and just sort of blend it in and you could just add more and more. So you have kind of like maybe some dark patches of clouds totally optional i did not do it on the original but you can go off the beaten path here anytime you don't have to stick with hey, this any is of our to, this original is, paintings this is supposed to be a fun change thing it up. right it's not something that you should be needing to call your therapist on monday morning <laughs> so one of the things with the darker paint colors like this using short little choppy brush strokes which we tend to do a lot um just by nature You'll notice you get a lot of little stop and start marks. You see, you can see them all over here. And we do add a lot of texture on top of this, just with our actual brush strokes. But if you want, you can smooth it out just by doing long end to end brush strokes. This I like, it's kind of satisfying. So a lot of times when I've been teaching this in a live setting, I will have the students paint the whole top like I'm doing now and then go over while it's still wet and just smooth everything out with these. Ooh. Oops, I just grabbed the wrong color. Long colors. end to end brush strokes. Oopsie daisy. Out of all of the versions of this particular Starry Night, I actually think I do like this one the best. Tell us and why. And maybe it was just taking a break from it. And yeah. maybe it's also the limited color palette. And Oh, yeah, because we used to use a lot more colors when yeah, we were in the studio. Yeah, we did. And we used the one Bahama Blue all the time. This is actually the very first painting we ever taught in the studio. Yes, it's the very first painting and the very last painting. Yeah. So we, we did that on purpose, actually, because of the, the name, <laughs> Van Gogh. We had to honor our, our Vincent Van Gogh. So you can see the little dark patches. To me, they, they just look like wispy clouds way off in the distance. You probably won't even notice them once we get everything going on here. And what we're going to do next is we're going to brush a little bit of white across the horizon line. Let me show you the original. So there is, if you look up, in fact, you can pull it up on your Google anytime. Uh, Van Gogh's original painting has this bright area back here. And I don't know if that, I've been, for years, I've been trying to figure out, is that a hill way back there? Or is he just doing some kind of like uh, atmospheric lightness The man on was the crazy, horizon? so it's hard to know. <laughs> he was not. Don't say that. Okay, let's wash our brush. He, he uh, partook in a lot of absinthe. 
and oil. And it was the absinthe with wormwood, which is not even, I don't think that's legal here in the U.S. It's not. But so it's super hallucinogenic. And I, I've actually heard theories that it's more the lead from the oil Yeah, paint. he also, he'd chew on his paintbrushes, from what I understand. So go ahead and dip your brush. I'll talk more about Van Gogh. <laughs> dip your brush in the white, and let's just go along the horizon. About a brush width, maybe a brush width and a half. So it would be about an inch to an inch and a half in height here. And it's going to turn light blue. Anyway, um, there were things he would do that, like uh, chewing on the paintbrush, eating around the paint. Uh, oil paint back then had lead in it. And so there was the possibility of some lead poisoning. But also he believed that if he, he consumed... with the painting. He believed that if he consumed yellow paint, it would make him happy. And so there's... Remember when I was saying a minute ago the man was crazy? <laughs> He was a genius, Paul. He, he was, was a genius. He was a mad genius. So, yeah, there, there's a lot of factors that, that went into some of the things he did. Um, I think, I guess, this particular painting was painted while he was in an asylum. I think it was in, I don't know how to print, I don't know if it's, it's St. Remy, is R-E-M-Y. It's probably pronounced different in France. Saint Rome. <laughs> I can't Saint say. Rame. <laughs> I'm going to butcher it. Anyway, um, he was staying there for a time, and he painted Starry Night during the day from his memory of what it looked like at night. So I thought that was interesting. Let's go ahead. I wash my brush, dry it off, rinse it, rinse it real good, and we're going to make a dark purple by blending blue and red together, about equal parts. So it's a real deep. Grape soda color, I think is what I usually will call this. Grape. Yeah, that's right. Paul's got to do his grape ape. That was really bad, though. <laughs> and I'm just going to come along here, recreate this hill. You can clean up the edge. It can be sort of blurry on the horizon. That's always a good thing, obviously. You don't have to have a, a super sharp horizon line here. And we're just going to cover... The bottom of the canvas. So just so you know, Jenny, so you don't feel like it's a surprise. I am painting this in the way I would paint a Van Gogh. Well, that's kind of the, the point here. <laughs> yeah. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be my interpretation. That's why I was like prefacing earlier. It's like, feel free to play around with it and make it yours. <laughs> Hopefully you guys had a great last month. I, I can't believe it's already been a month since I taught the, was it the? Um, the manatee. The manatee, yeah. Yeah. And I've seen on our Facebook group page, which feel free to join anyone. It's just Go Box Art Create on Facebook group page. I, I say group page because it's not our business page. It's our actual group page, <coughs> which we're a lot more active on. Excuse me. I've seen a lot of uh, everybody's manatees, and they're so good. That makes me so happy because it means that, I did a pretty okay job teaching. <laughs> Jenny, the pretty okay teacher. <laughs> With animals. You did a great they're job. They're hard. Teaching that. They're hard, especially, you know, we had all those wrinkles to paint and the wrinkles on the fins, too. But great job, everyone, really. Super excited to see that. I love that you guys post your paintings. Please continue to do that. That do just it. makes my day. It does. She calls me at work. Actually, she doesn't. She texts me at work. She's like, make sure you're checking out everybody's paintings. Yeah, I sometimes have to remind Paul to go on Facebook. I forget. I oh, forget. Oh, new grandson is now six weeks old. Ah, awesome. congratulations. We'll make a painter out of him. <laughs> okay, We will be his Bob Ross. <laughs> I'm washing my brush. We will be his, the, his Van Gogh. <laughs> we will be the new generation's Bob Ross. My parents just used to plop me down in front of the TV, and I just used to watch this Paul and Jenny, and they just made me so happy. <laughs> okay, so I'm drying my brush off. We're going to set this one aside. And just have a look at your canvas. Take a little breather. Painting the whole front is, um, it's a little hard on the, the muscles. It is. And especially when you do it nonstop, even though this is not a big canvas, it's 11 by 14. Gosh, we remember what we always used to do. Everything was 16 by 20. So almost twice as big. Well, actually, surface area-wise, almost four times as big. Yeah, in the for the in-studio classes. Yeah. 
So next we are going to paint. Oh, <laughs> your three-year-old loves to paint with you. That's great. I remember you posting about that before. That's super cool. So we're going to talk about the swirls. I have two great big ones in the sky, and I just basically dissected Van Gogh's painting and thought, okay, how can we how can we make this on an 11 by 14 canvas? The, his actual version is his Starry Night painting is not very big, a lot smaller than I ever thought it was. It was Monet who had the huge paintings. Yeah, <laughs> Van Gogh's were relatively small. It's always surprising because like Monet's paintings were like literally eight feet tall and like 12 feet wide. Yeah. I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's insane. We're going to start with the moon area. Just this, we're going to get a basic circle on here so that we know, like if we started with the swirls, we'd run out or we might go too far and then have to put on a tiny moon. So I like to start with the moon first. Now you've gone too far. <laughs> and this one swirl starts... And then this one comes right off of the bottom of it. And I will draw that out. Can I, do we have, I'm going to have you go grab a Sharpie and a piece of paper for me. Sharpie and a piece of paper. Yeah. Let's see what so, I can come up with. While he's doing that, let's pick up our number eight brush. And you can dampen that up and blot it dry on your towel. The fun thing about this new microphone system is I can walk all over the place and it still sounds like I'm right there. <laughs> Mm, weird. <laughs> it's kind of weird. So we're going to make a really pale blue. You technically could use white here because this is wet, so it will turn pale blue anyways. But let's go ahead and, and scrape off a little cobalt and a little white. It's really pale. Very, very pale. Like this. Your Sharpie, madam. Thank you. I will use that in a second. Oh, sure. And we want to kind of plot in a circle. So I'm just going to, I use the thin edge of my brush. This is about a little bit bigger than a golf ball. It's probably about half again the size. <laughs> well, let's see. I've got one in the drawer over there. <laughs> we could put Paul one on actually the... went golfing today. I did. So see how I'm just kind of dabbing some white on there with uh, not any major commitment. To be fair, that's not, be that's becoming a not uncommon thing, so. Golfing? Yeah. <laughs> This gets changed up so much. So right now, it's honestly, it's going to look not very good. But we're going to change that up lots and lots. <laughs> can't get Mark to pick up a paintbrush. We'll have to change that. It's all right. I can't get Jenny to pick up a golf club. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to draw the swirls on now. And you can use your small pointy brush, your number two if you really want, or this. I like to use the flat brush, but use the thin edge. But before I have us do that, I want to show you what to do and what not to do. So what I've seen in the studio after years and years of teaching this, we're going to come off the side and we're going to curl like, oops, <laughs> curl like this. So I've seen people get to this point. And then they get their swirl all done and they don't know what looks wrong with it. They can't figure it out, but they know something's wrong. And what the thing is, is you need to carry this inward and really spiral it like a snail shell. And so if you are the type that does a swirl, see this one's going to come out from under here. If you're a type that does a swirl that doesn't quite swirl, you're doing more of that. Just make yourself bring it in and spiral it more. You better work it. <laughs> so I'm going to use this paper again in a little bit. Okay. But let's grab the canvas back here and just go for it. You don't have to like try to do anything perfect here. Just make sure you swirl it in. See how mine's kind of bumpy and wobbly? I just dot it on because it's really just sort of plotting it on and then we, we go from there. And then I'll do this second one. And we add so much to the sky. that this, what you're seeing right now is going to be completely obliterated. So like I could change this, I could, oh, I need to make it go higher or, you know, you can completely change it up. You're not just locked into ever. You're not locked into what you paint first off at, right out of the shoot ever with acrylic painting. Oh no, one and done. <laughs> okay. Now, before I do anything else, what are we on? We're on step three. Okay, I want to take this light blue and using the thin edge or your, your small brush, go around the moon with little 
dotted dashed lines and then do another layer. It's going to mix with the wet paint. We add a lot more layers to this, but this is just getting the general glow on. Get your glow on. <laughs> Mine's getting very messy. <laughs> Yours kind of looks like a fantasy color lens. Oh, it's going to be awesome when it's done. <laughs> okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to thicken up and widen up these swirls. So they're going to go from a single line to being a lot wider. And we're do going to do that with a series of dashes in different colors. We're going to start with this light blue. I'm going to grab my paper real quick. And this is what the very first time I taught Starry Night, um, I learned to really describe the dashes more because I had everybody paint their swirls. They did a great job. And then when I said, okay, let's thicken these up by adding dashes and I started going for it, what was happening is people were flicking outward for some reason. So their dashes were, <laughs> I don't know what, what was causing that, but everybody ended up with feather boas. They still love their paintings. It was a blast. It was a class that took forever, three hours, because it was our very first class ever and it was a bunch of friends. But yeah, for some reason they were doing this. What you want to do is you want to follow the lines. So you can do broken up lines like I'm doing, but you don't want to flick outward or under, you know, you don't want to flick downward or outward. Just follow, follow that follow original line and you can do short, choppy little ones, especially as you get in here. But this is our goal to Thicken up that single line by doing dashes that follow. No feather boas. We don't want that. I mean, unless you really want that for yourself. I shouldn't say we don't want that because maybe you like that look. Okay, so I'm going to go to my light blue again. Using the thin edge of this number eight brush, or you can use your little skinny brush, just figure out which one you like better in your hand. And I'm just going to go along. Again, not flicking outward or downward, just little dashes that follow. Think that. of the movement of it. Yeah. Think of this like, uh, like a tornado kind of, like maybe not quite that dramatically angry. So I, I have my original line, I went above it, and now I'm going to go below it, and that's how you'll get it kind of thickened up on both sides. And your little dashes you put in here, like I said earlier, they can be short and choppy or long and rounded. Just a mix of the two is perfect. Looking at Van Gogh's paintings, I think he painted a lot with lifting and tapping his brush back on the canvas to get it's like a lot of this sort of thing it's probably like what you would not even really call technique you know <laughs> Boy, what I mean? you are dissing him no 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 what i mean is it's more like just vibing with the painting and not really doing like i'm using this particular dry brush technique or this particular, it's just letting it flow. He said, I do what I want. <laughs> do what I want. So there have been people who've studied his paintings. This one in particular, because I think it's probably his most popular. You know, actually, you know which one is? It's his sunflowers painting. Oh, it's actually okay. considered his most Most well iconic. Yeah. My favorite painting of his is actually the one called Starry Night on the Rhone. And it is a Starry Night painting, same colors as the original Starry Night, but completely different technique. And it's stars over the water and some boats. And it's really pretty. Highly recommend you check that out. It's R-H-O-N-E. So Starry Night over the Rhone, which is a river in France. And uh, yeah, so there have been people who studied this particular painting and the people are like like these scholars and they're like he was painting wind patterns he was ahead of his time he was painting the wind patterns and i'm like maybe or it might have been the absinthe <laughs> could have been the absinthe and the lead poisoning maybe he was really seeing this <laughs> this is what it looked like when he looked at the night sky maybe he had really bad astigmatism 
<laughs> I mean, this is basically what oncoming traffic looks like to me. Yeah, exactly. It does. Yeah, you see like a lot of <laughs> glowing stuff. So just keep building this to the width that you wanted. I feel like what I've got right now is about an inch to an inch and a half in width all the way around. And it doesn't have to be the same all the way around here. I, like I, here I got pretty thin. But get it to where you want it, you like it. And I'm gonna add, now that the moon has dried a bit, I'm gonna add some more light blue around the edges here. So the moon is treated the same way, lots of little dashes around it. And this definitely is the, the one that is kind of like a stigmatism because when you look at street lights or oncoming traffic, everything sort of has this halo around it. Does yours, when you look at it, does it create like stars, like yeah. starburst things? Okay. Yeah. I hate driving at night. Just want to put that out there. <laughs> okay. Main roads are fine. It's this, the narrow back roads when oncoming traffic comes. It's just like everything else is dark and then there's like headlights. And it's like, oh, oh. <laughs> Arf. We are going to wash our brush and we're going to bump back to step three. I skipped ahead a little. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to begin to add some yellow down in here. And we're also going to create some lavender hill areas. So let's let's make our lavender. So you've got you maybe have purple left. You're just going to add a little white to it. I need to make more. My purple had dried. So my particular lavender on the original is more of a bluish lavender. But it really doesn't matter. You can do more of a pinkish lavender. Make a lavender you like. I'm actually really having fun with this one tonight. <laughs> Good. Good deal. I mean, I say, I say that like, I actually, no, I always have fun with them, but I'm having a lot of fun with this one tonight. <laughs> okay. So the hills, are let's have alive. a look. Here they are. Lots of curved lines. That are, there's some separation between them, so you see some of the dark purple. And this is the style of Van Gogh's painting. We add this later, so if you're wondering where that is, we add that later. So down in here, go ahead, go start right at the horizon line. And don't be nervous here because you can completely cover it up with the dark purple and start again. But this is what I like to start with, is something along this line. So see how it is like kind of hair-like maybe? A little separation between each line or some of the lines. And then I'll make another hill come off of that one. And then maybe I'll make a hill here. You can go a little extra on this too because the moon would really be our major light source in this. And I'll show you how to go a little extra in just a bit. So see, they're just gonna end at the bottom. Like there's no reason to do anything clean down here because we bring grass up to it. So if you're wondering about, well, how do I end these? <laughs> Don't worry about it. For some reason I was thinking about, oh, I know, never mind. Okay, <laughs> I'm never minding. Well, I, I was thinking about Leland last night. Oh. Our old teacher, and it was because we were talking about the other teacher. Was the name Rick? I think so, our basic design teacher. Yeah, and I started thinking about Leland and... Okay. That's it. <laughs> okay, so what I wanna do now is kind of up the, the highlights on these. Right now, they're just a basic, kind of looks like rolling grass or whatever you wanna see it as. 
And to make this a little bit highlighted, we think of our moon as our light source. So let's scrape off a little white and make a lighter lavender. I'm actually gonna bring a little more red into mine. Make it a little pinker, more pink. Now I don't want a huge amount of paint on my brush to do this because we're just adding highlights. We're not creating a whole new mountain range. So you can wipe your brush off and I like to redip the tip of the bristles. So think of the moonlight. It's going to get the top of each of these. So the top of each hill is going to be hit with the little bit of light here. So down in here, I leave it alone. Top here, this, the, sorry, the left sides of these, I leave alone because they would be away from the moonlight more. <laughs> I'm using way less of this light lavender than I did of the darker. Just an accent highlight. And then I'll just have a look and we add more color to this. We add some blue and some yellow later on. So you're not just ending it here. So just have a look and when you feel like you've got enough, then you can say I've got enough and wash your brush. And now let's add some yellow in here. Do I mix it with white at first? White and yellow, yep. So about equal parts white and yellow. Scrape off a little white, plop it down next to the yellow, scrape off about the same amount of yellow, and mix it together till you get the color of lemon buttercream. Yummy. And we're just going to add, maybe I need to wipe my brush. A lot of, yeah, I'm gonna pull a little more yellow in there. So I'm just going to add some dashes, just like we did up here. along this. And you know, I know in the step four picture, it's only partly done, but we can go ahead and go all the way across because we do that later. This was probably one of those things where I took the photo and was like, um, actually I need to carry this across. <laughs> so do that right over this light area. Think of it like a burst of wind going across here. This whole painting is all about movement. Chaotic movement. <laughs> Everything's moving in all different directions. Okay. Wash that brush. We're going to add a little white to our moon area just not this area around quite yet just the central area because I'll, I'll show you my original here this gets added to a lot so we we need to get a, a brighter more solid white on there and then later on we're going to add some yellow i washed my brush and i'm just going to dip it in white and see how i'm painting it on i'm not like circling it and then coloring it all the way in we're coloring it in with lots of little choppy dash like brush strokes so it's not a complete fill not a solid ball kind of hazy and now you can determine how how big do you want the moon to be it can be the star of the show if you want it can be called moony night <laughs> careful Moony Knight. <laughs> was, that, was that the joker of the round table? Hey, here comes Moony Knight again. <laughs> okay. I threw my brush in the water and I didn't need to because we're going to use white again, same brush. 
Okay, dip it in the white and use the thin edge of your brush or your smallest round brush if you're more comfortable with that. Let's add some white streaks in here. I'm not gonna do quite as many white as I did with the light blue. So it's just kind of an accent color. Just brightening this up. Yo, what kind of accent are you talking about? <laughs> that was bad. It was <laughs> very bad. How you doing? <laughs> I saw there's a new movie coming out called Paint, and it has Owen Wilson in it, and it is totally a, he's like a Bob Ross figure, but his name's Carl, I think. Yeah. That looks interesting. It doesn't look like he's like that much like Bob Ross, but except, they for him. The, except for the beard and the afro. And the way he paints is exactly that. Yeah. But you can tell that they were making sure they're not going to. Get sued by Bob Ross Inc. <laughs> yeah. They probably still will attempt. Um, last I checked, you can't copyright an afro. <laughs> or a beard. Or painting. A painting you can, but an artist. Someone a style painting. you can. Someone painting. Okay. Yeah, there his life was pretty tragic. And well, How old was he? He was like... 37. 37 when he mm -hmm. died? Yeah, 37. Uh, <laughs> Jessica Smith. I'm a little behind on your video, but have you heard about the movie Paint? <laughs> ah, that's funny. Wait, Jinx. What? You just mentioned it. <laughs> okay, gonna wash the brush off. We are now, we're almost done with step four. What I wanna do now is add a little light blue accent color to these bottom hills. And you can see it's a little bit darker than the light blue we made in the sky. So let's, uh, I've got some light blue here. I need to add a little more cobalt to it. So it's really close to this shade. Yeah, right here. And I'm gonna wipe my brush off before touching it to the canvas because I have a lot of paint on. And just go ahead and throw in some slashes in blue, not nearly as much as you did the other colors, unless you really decide you want a lot of blue down here. Yeah, when Jenny told me about that movie coming out, I was like, wow. <laughs> wow. ka -chow. Oh, we're just doing more of that, huh? Yeah, just adding blue. That's really nice. I like that. I mean, it looks funny because there's no end to it. And uh, we haven't added the grass in yet, but it like I can visualize it as, yeah, it kind of looks like mountains in the moonlight. Just done very Van Gogh style. You know, this is the way he sketched, too. Yeah. He was a really good artist. Like his sketches are amazing. Well, and if you look at the the style of art be, uh, uh, before he started painting in Paris, you look at his stuff from because he is a Dutch artist, and Dutch landscape is a actual like genre of. Yeah, his name is actually pronounced Van Gogh. Um, we just in America they butchered it and call it Van Gogh, and we're like. We don't really want to be called Golf Box. <laughs> and so. Golf Box. We were like, go. We just went with the, the American pronunciation, the butchered pronunciation. Okay, we're going to add some yellow now up in here. So let's go ahead and take your yellow and white mixture. You can refresh it. You can add more uh, white and yellow. Somebody's out there with kind of a loud car. I've got a little blue coming out of my brush, and I'm going to get green if that happens. So I'm going to. Is it a car or is it an airplane? It's a car. It's an airplane. Oh, it is? Oh my gosh, it sounds like somebody's loud car. That's funny. No, oh, yep, it's an airplane. Yeah. Okay. So let's go ahead. For those of you who are tuning in for the first time, we are right next to a small airport. We technically rent. <laughs> we actually, our facility is owned by the, the air park, so. We don't give it a lot of action in the evening like this, but during well, the day, there's quite a lot. When the weather gets better. 
Yeah, that's true. We do have really nice weather right now. It got up to 60 today. <laughs> oh my gosh, out on the golf course, it felt like it was 80 degrees. Two weeks ago, it was like 30 and snowing. So that's Oregon springtime for you. Like the weather in Oregon in spring is so fickle, indecisive. It just does not know what it wants to do. You know what they say, if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes. Yeah, exactly. But I think other states stay the same thing, so. Yeah, and you know, one thing I'm really glad about is um, we don't get a lot of, like, we don't have hurricanes, we don't have tornadoes. There is a chance of that gigantic northwest earthquake that's supposed to hit any time between now and the next thousand years. <laughs> uh, it's actually like 500 years overdue, but, you know. Oh, great. <laughs> I try not to lose sleep at night over that. Nope. When it happens, it happens. <laughs> not much you can do about it. Okay. How do we get onto that topic? Let's, uh, let's keep adding the yellow in there. Add as much yellow as you want. What I'm going to do next, though, is I'm going to add pure yellow, so not the yellow and white mix. So we've got this soft kind of lemony, oh, shoot, buttery color, which is nice up here, but we want to warm it up. Add some nice warmth to this painting. So I'm going to wash the brush. And save this light yellow, because we're going to use it in a minute. But I'm going to go ahead and dip this brush in the pure yellow. And you can add some of that in here. You can see it really uh, turns up the heat on these. And everything we've been doing has been with cool colors up until we added the yellow. And so now this is going to be a nice warm color. Are you and saying the, that the other colors were? The other colors were uncool. Like <laughs> this color is like not very popular because it's not cool. It's uncool. Oh, I'm glad you love the new boxes. Aren't they so fun? I had to hold myself back from showing those on our... Facebook group page. I was like, Paul's like, just let him be surprised. <laughs> so yeah, Kim, you got yours early. I was so excited to ship your, your paintings in that. It's like, she's going to be so excited. <laughs> I figured you'd think that you were getting your monthly go box. And then I was like, what if she's one of those that doesn't open it right away? <laughs> but you opened it the day it came, which is wonderful. Okay. Now I'm going to add some yellow down in here. Let me show you. You can see it's it's not a lot, but we need to think of this, all this yellow in the sky is going to reflect down on these mountains. So I like to use the yellow white because it's the yellow and white mix because it's not quite as, um, I don't know, it, the plain yellow on top of this can get kind of muddy. So I'll just uh, scoop in a, some little pops of that, not a lot. I'm doing the same sort of dashy technique. Think of it uh, under the light sources. So obviously we can hit the tops of these, even over here. So I know I've been focusing on the left side, but this is right up above the, the hill, so it can kind of come down a bit on the other sides. Pretty, pretty. Now under the moon, you can make it really bright if you like. And maybe right under here too. Let's add some pure yellow to this. So not the white yellow mix. Meant to do that next with, before changing. I didn't even wash my brush. I just dipped it right in that. So I am doing the little lift lift and drag technique with the brush to get these brush strokes to be little dashes. Uh, when I've taught this live in the past, what I've told the students is, you know those little fish, I think they're sardines, that they swim together and they make all these formations? That's what these are. They're like those little, they're sardines, and they all swim together and create these cool formations. I don't know how they do it, but they've got it figured out. So it's a little school of fish. All doing the same thing. <laughs> Time to add some green. This painting, we use this number eight brush a lot. It's mostly the whole painting.
Okay, so we are going to mix cobalt blue and the yellow to make kind of a grass green color. And we're going to do a landscape down in here that is very similar to what we did here. And then later on we highlight it with this green. So let's scrape off some blue. It's about twice as much yellow to blue. Because otherwise you end up with a very teal green color. Now that would work if you like it. It's just going to be a bit darker. So I do add quite a bit of yellow. Enough that I might end up having to have Paul get more yellow. About like this. Just blue and yellow? Yeah, more yellow though. It's about twice, maybe even three times the amount of yellow gotcha. to blue. And you can wipe your brush off if you have a lot of paint blobbed on it. Noted. <laughs> Inside joke. And I'm going to start way over here. And I'm just going to do a rolling... It's basically like a rolling hillside like we did here. And you can come right up to the bottom edge of these hills. I have a mess. <laughs> this okay is looking it, very impressionistic. It's like you turned Van Gogh it's, into it's Monet. Turning, yeah, it's totally turning Van Gogh into Monet is what it's doing. Rude. It's the way I paint, though. and This, this is, is the way. This is the way. <laughs> and... Um, I think the... Yeah, it's hard to do things different than your natural way after when you've been doing it for so long. That's like turning the trailblazers into the Lakers. Hey now, <laughs> bite your tongue. <laughs> so you can make some bolder, like what I mean by bolder is like thicker brush strokes down here. So like I can press a little harder with my brush because this is closer to the viewpoint of the person... Uh, looking at the landscape. So these might be finer, thinner lines back here, but these can be nice and thick. Think of it like an overgrown field with the grass being sort of blown over or bent over. And you'll have little bits of the purple peeking through. You can decide how much of that you want. Oh, I'm loving how it's looking. It's come along good. Where I can see it from my vantage point right now is I'm getting a lot of glare because I'm sort of looking at it like skimmed across the top. But when I look up and look at the monitor in front of me, I can get a, a good view of it. And I, I like the way that ended up better than from my own vantage viewpoint. <laughs> this is why painting on an easel is nice. Yeah. Yeah, and if you guys do want to ever buy easels, um, Blick Art Supply has some pretty, really good ones that are priced not crazy, and they're metal. There's a bronze colored one that they used to have. I think they probably still have. We bought a bunch of those for our travel events. And then there's a black one. The black one is, um, it's a lot more heavy duty. You can do a lot larger canvases, but the bronze one is fine if you're just doing, you know, up to like 18 by 24 canvases. I think that it 18, can handle that. Yeah, it's a little floppy a little with floppy. the 18 by 24, but it's close. Okay, I want to say they're probably around $30 those yeah. easels unless it, they've gone way up i know their paint bottles have gone way up and their uh different supplies that they have um, everything's gone up everywhere yeah all right just having a look here don't want to miss anything and i don't want to miss a thing <laughs> you can add this grass green color to this back portion. I can't remember if I saw that in the original or what reasoning was was behind that. But you can see where I have added green. It's probably just my way of adding some more color. I wouldn't add a lot though. Maybe even do a do the uh, add a little more blue to it. 
so you have closer to a teal. We don't really want to take away the brightness of this, but we're just adding color. So totally optional. I'm going to just call it good there for the green. <laughs> oh, yeah, we had to get you that. We had to get you the salt marsh painting. <laughs> Paul's salt marsh. That was perfect. The Everglades scene that he painted. And, and then the manatee. We thought of you guys when we designed those. I think I said that in the last video. Oh, stars. The stars, if you're able to see right here, they, they look really weird at first. They just look like little blobs. They're not completely circular. It's just a marking point because we build from those. <laughs> so we want to take our yellow and white mixture. You might need to make some more. Clean your brush off. Get all the green. We don't want green stars. So it was two parts white, one part yellow, thereabouts. Lemon yogurt, lemon buttercream. That's, that's the I'm color. I'm hungry. Me too. <laughs> I haven't really eaten Hungry today. for baked goods. So I in, had one of those Nature Valley wafer bars and uh, some gonna, pistachios. I was going to lecture you because those are good as. <laughs> well, you know what? Who buys them? Who pays for them? <laughs> like, I can buy her more. It's okay. Okay, so we're just going to paint just little marker points for the stars. These are a little bit larger than, like, they're a little bit smaller than a penny. That's probably the, probably the best way to put it. And I just tuck them in where it looks like they would fit. I know in his original, there's a really big one, really big, big one down here. It's serious. I think I, I think probably. They had, uh, I could put it here. I feel point. like here is going to get a little crowded, and it might get covered by the tree. Every time I paint this, it'll end up being slightly different. <laughs> you know that they they've actually. Um, like astronomers have actually looked at his original painting and been able to determine that when exactly he painted it because of the accuracy of the stars. Wow, like the uh, like the constellations and stuff. Yeah, I think so. I could just be making stuff up though, so don't quote me on that. <laughs> Too late. Already done. Quoted. Okay, I've got the light yellow on my brush, so I'm going to use that and I'm going to loosely go over the moon, the circle part, not the dashes around it. You can add some more yellow to it if you want to warm it up just a bit, but not a ton because we want that orange to really stand out. And I'm doing the same thing I did earlier with the white where I'm just sort of doing unplanned little dashes to fill it in. A lot of lifting and tapping. And now I'll take, using the thin edge of my brush, you can add a few of these light yellow dashes around the outside, right in here with the light blue. And now I'm going to wash my brush because I want to go to the straight, pure, unmixed yellow. Don't eat it. It won't give you happy thoughts. But it also shouldn't poison you. It's non-toxic. <laughs> okay, so plain yellow. Add some of those warm yellow dashes around. By the way, just by saying that's non-toxic, I want to clarify that we're not advocating or suggesting in any way, shape, and form as on the behalf of our company that you in any way or on under any circumstances, consume paint. <laughs> Are you doing the fine print? Yeah. Just <laughs> don't consume any paint like Van Gogh did. Don't eat paint. People. Eating yellow paint will not make you happy. He figured that out. So I'm going to add some dashes of plain unmixed yellow into this part. And I'm just keeping it choppy. Keeping it real. Keeping it choppy. I'm reading my, I'm trying to follow along to make sure I don't miss anything. 
But I do, I go outside the box a bit just when I'm paint, teaching Jenny. these. Just yeah. paint, You got this. I believe in you. <laughs> We're going to work on the stars. Um, we've already added yellow to the, we're on step seven, by the way, if you're following along with the instructions. Okay, we want to use our smallest brush. So we're going to let this moon dry, clean off of this guy, your number eight that's been, number eight has been so great <laughs> during this painting. And let's pick up our little guy. You, you know, if we, had a, if we had a number five, we would totally have to call it Johnny Five, right? <laughs> you can dip it in the water and dry it off. And now let's take this light yellow and we're going to do little dashes around these circles. So they're broken up little dashes. So imagine this is what, uh, if you wear glasses or contacts, this is what bright lights look like when you take them out or take them off. <laughs> so kind of a hazy, no defined edges. Hazy shade of winter. <laughs> Look around. That was bad. A bonus shout out to anybody who can name that this the band who sang that song, by the way. Hazy shade of. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know? I can hear it in my head, but I don't remember who the band is. Something, yeah. I don't know. Okay, so... It was the Bengals, by the way. I'm just going It was? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Because I don't think anybody was going to guess. I bet someone would have. So I'm... I mean, they still can. Using very light pressure here to get these little wispy dashes around the outside edges. I think it's probably, it might be kind of difficult at first to follow the curve of this because it's natural to want to flick outward. So just take your time. Think of it like taking one of these circles we drew on and putting a bunch of parentheses all around it. <laughs> I wonder if this is serious. I don't know. The North I mean, Star. the painting is serious. It's funny that Sirius Black is named after the brightest star in the sky. Mm -hmm. Outside of our own sun. It's kind of cool how Sir Sirius actually, a lot of times you can see it and it's blinking different colors. We, My son and I, we, we take walks at night with our dogs. I know anyway, we've mentioned that on here before. I'm just adding a little yellow to the middle of these stars, that light yellow. Uh, anyway, so we, we always point out Sirius and we say it's the disco star because it's flashing red and blue if you really look at it. It's one of the very few stars that actually at times shows every color in the spectrum. Huh. I'm going to take this everything in little between. brush and I'm going to add some finer light yellow dashes around the moon. Yeah, that's really cool. My moon and swirl are hitting each other, but they did in the original too. Yeah, mine are. <laughs> I got a lot of overlap going on with mine. So take a look right now and see, is there anywhere else you want to add? The pale yellow, too, that's up in here. We haven't done any detail work down here yet, so it's just going to stay plain for a minute. Because we're going to mix orange, and we're going to paint this crescent moon on here. Sweet. Let's do it. Do you want to zoom in at all or anything? Mm -hmm. You know, just let me Let's know. Let's zoom in on the moon area. Well, I can't control where it zooms in. Just I can zoom in. Well, th that's what I want. Okay, yeah, there we go. Okay, I'll bring my palette over. I'm going to choose a bigger brush to mix the color with because that little brush can get kind of messed up. The bristles can get messed up if you're mixing color with it too much. Uh, so this is going to be a lot of yellow. Not, I mean, not a huge amount of paint, but it's a lot more yellow to red. Just a little, I pick up a little corner of the red. <laughs> there we go. You can see already that tiny little dot of yellow 
turned it pumpkin orange. You mean red? I mean, yeah, sorry. The tiny little dot of red turned it pumpkin orange. That's the color I'm aiming for. If you, uh, if it turned out too red, just add more yellow into it. My yellow here is polluted with green. You don't need a ton of this color. Okay. The crescent moon. Let me get my paper. People had a hard time with this. I'm just going to say it. But when you look at Van Gogh's painting, his moon is very imperfect. So it's not like super crisp. It's more like this kind of thing. It kind of almost looks like a, a child painted it, honestly. And I think that's, I love that about this painting, actually. Don't you think all of his paintings kind of have that vibe? Yeah. So in Teaching Starry Night, about a quarter of the class, every time I teach it, they turn their crescent moon into a full moon because they don't like it. But I want you to not put the pressure on yourself. It does not have to look like a natural moon. So don't go in thinking, I got to make an, an exact accurate replica of a crescent moon. It is more like a kid's drawing of a crescent moon. And I like to just draw a C shape and then make the edges pointy and thicken up the middle. So that's what we're going to do. So what you want to avoid is the banana moon where your edges are kind of more rounded. So you can see the difference. Pointy versus rounded. We don't want that. All right. I think we got this. Let's bring this back over. Now that I'm nice and zoomed in, grab your littlest brush. Oh, I just dropped one. You know, no. it's okay. It's my number four. I don't even think we use it. Okay. Taking the orange here. Right in here, just draw a C shape. Now, my paint, the yellow I painted in here is still wet. It might help you. <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm not kidding. Might, might. I actually will probably paint this and give it a light fill in and then add another coat later because what's happening is it's mixing with the light yellow that's still wet in here and I want it to be more vivid orange. So once you draw it and have it filled in, you can adjust it how you want. Like, oh, maybe I want to curve it a little more. Maybe I want to extend these edges out and make them more pointy. But right now, my paint under here is too wet. You can see how it's sort of disappearing right through here. That's because the yellow under that is really wet and it's just mixing and making it too light. So I'm going to leave it alone and I'm going to take my orange now and I'm going to add a little bit of orange to some of these dashes around the stars. Just a few dabs little dashes here and there. And let me scoot this over. I can probably zoom out now, Paul. Okay. You have the remote? Yes, I do. Okay. There we oh, go. Right there? Yeah. So this warmed them up a lot. And the other place I'm going to add orange is through here. Not a lot. Let's have a look. You can see I just added a few random dashes. Now I can tell I need to add just a bit more red. In fact, do you have yellow on your palette? Do you have any left over? I do. I'm going to scrape some off. Oh, it was my number eight brush that rolled off. I thought it was number four. Darn it, number eight. <laughs> I might have to have you crawl under and get it. <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> So I made a little bit more vivid orange. I'm going to try to get more yellow here without picking up the green. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, caramba. Yeah, when I paint this on the moon later, I think it'll be better. So I'm just adding some rando dashes. You can add a little water to your paint. I do that sometimes if I didn't mix a lot and I'm using this little brush and I want like a nice fluid brush stroke, like a nice dash. 
having a little bit of water mixed in will help you. Because I don't like it when the brush really drags on the canvas. Oh, I do. I can tell you do. I actually, it's something I probably should learn to like more because I think it would help me not be, help me loosen up a little bit. Quit being so rigid, Jenny. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. So this is still too wet, but when it dries, I'm going to put a little bit more of that on there. Oh my gosh, it went really blurry all of a sudden. It's because I accidentally stepped on the Smooth. sand. Smooth. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Is it going to clear up? Uh, you need to lean your head back. There we go. There we go. Okay, it's clear now. I thought my vision was going wonky. <laughs> Okay. Step eight. Here we are. Now, when these are like step eight, step nine, there's actually, as you guys know, multiple steps per. So it's like step eight, but broken down into <laughs> little steps. We're going to highlight that lower grass with our number eight brush and the green apple color. Finally, I thought I wasn't going to be able to use this color in here. Uh, I'll take my number eight, either your number eight or your number four. Maybe I'll use my number four so it doesn't feel lonely. It doesn't feel like I have neglected it through the whole painting like I have. Let's have a look at the highlighted grass. So light source is here. That's going to highlight, just like we did with the lighter lavender on these, it's going to highlight the top edges of these grassy mounds. You can add as much or as little as you want. This color is super fun. If you want to add it anywhere else in here, you could probably add it in the swirls. Van Gogh won't know. <laughs> he might. He, he won't watching. know at all. <laughs> he might be watching us. Oops, I just splattered a few dots on here. You know, that's just adding a nice abstract quality to that. My little specks. So first I'm going to go along the top edge. So what I like to do is like to mix long curved brush strokes in with shorter ones. Sometimes I don't even follow the exact pattern that I did underneath. Like you can see all of this is going off this way. Well, I could change that up. The highlight will, will change it. I can change this up and I could do some that went the opposite direction. And the eye is going to be drawn to that, not what's really going on underneath it because grass underneath it was really dark. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> Yours is so different than mine. Oh, mine's just way <laughs> different. I'm having fun, I told you. I'm more about having fun on this one. You have fun on all of them. I do. And that's good. That's what we're supposed to do. Okay, let's see. Sometimes I over highlight, but I think it's okay down in here. We've got so much going on in the upper sky that down here can have a little love too. Sometimes in certain paintings, I might say, no, you don't want the, the two to compete. But this painting as a whole is just full of, like I've said before, full of movement. So you can play that up. I got paint on here. <laughs> hmm? I got paint on the instruction sheet. Darn it, won't be able to reuse that one. <laughs> I keep flicking green. It must just be like this little brush. I'm cramming too much paint on it. Okay. Over here we get the big tree in just a bit. And the nice thing is, is if you get the highlights on and you're like, this looks too chaotic, I don't like it, let it dry, which will only take like five minutes. Go back to your darker green and just make it more subtle by adding bits of the darker green back in there from underneath, you know, work from the underside upward. But I think this will work. It looks very Van Gogh. It kind of looks like a face. You see the two eyes and the nose and then <laughs> I won't be able to unsee it. I broke that rule. Rule 327. <laughs> Don't ask us why we came up with 327. It's just a random number, but it is, was a standing rule in the studio. You did. I know, but there is no like reason why we used that number. Hmm. 
All right. Let's see. What do we got next? The next step. Thank oh. you, Captain Obvious. I missed something. Did I put it on here even? I like to write the instructions as I go. Like I'll take a picture and then I'll like go to my computer and write the instructions. Sometimes it doesn't work out that way. And I'm always like, did I forget something? And I'll read it and reread it. And Then Eric a lot of times when he makes these, will he'll add it in. He'll be like, you forgot this. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna take my smallest brush and I'm going to add actual white stars to the center of these. So just dip your brush in there and just swirl it around so you have a pencil eraser size dot in there. So it's not huge. And one thing I noticed on Van Gogh's original, this this big star down here, he had it really bright, whatever star it is, so he got, had a lot of white dashes around it. So he really wanted that one to be a focal point. And you can add white dashes around any of these. I didn't too much, because I didn't really want to take away from the, the warmth of the yellow, but feel free to pick a random star and add some white dashes around. Okay. Now, this next part is a lot of fun. We're getting pretty close to where we'll be done with this pretty soon. Um, let's see how dry that is. Are Let's we doing need the to stars? wait a little bit. Yeah. But first, we have to do all the little. We're actually done with down here. Completely done. But I, we're going to add all these little dashes that you see. So I'll tilt this so you can really see them. So see, sometimes I'll go around a star for a while. These are kind of a medium blue. You can see them back there. It's fun. It's like you're, you're constantly changing directions. And that's what gives this whole sense of movement. Brush-wise, you can either use any of your three small ones. I used my number eight, and I used the thin edge of it. But you could totally use the number four. It's just a little bit smaller. Or that little round one, your tiniest one, if that feels better in your hand. It's all about, you know, you'll get used to brushes that you like. And any time I've got a new set of brushes, it takes me a while to figure out which ones I like for different techniques. Okay, let's get back on here. So we're going to make a color that's just a couple shades lighter than this. So it, it's this color here that we made earlier for down in here. It's really close to that color, maybe a little darker. So I'll scrape off blue, scrape off white. Because what I don't want it to do is I don't want it to command the attention because those swirls do. So this is going to be more subtle. So we want it to be just a shade or two lighter than the actual base sky. I'm going to attempt one down here and see. Yeah, that's about the right color. Okay, using the thin edge of the brush, so I, I wiped some of the paint off, so I'm not starting off with a giant glob. Using the thin edge of the brush, I'm just going to start around here, and I'll do some little dashes, that a whole layer of them that follow around this big star. So you can see that. I could have made this maybe a tiny bit lighter. Not a ton, though. I don't want to go too crazy. So there, did my dashes around here. And now under here, I might switch the direction and start following this curve. My little school of sardines here. We're gonna go all the way up. And now I'm going to switch directions and I'm going to go around this star. So you can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm filling in the whole entire sky with lots of little movement. Movement. For lack of a better lots word. Lots of sardines. <laughs> and then under the moon right over here, I've got a little bit of room, so I'll follow that direction for a bit. 
do. I mix a, a little bit of more white with my color because I felt like as it dries, it's going to dry a little darker. So I wanted it to be just a tiny bit lighter so that it doesn't completely disappear. Now up here, I'm going to follow the roundness of the moon for a little bit. And now I'm going to switch. See how sometimes I'll do like three in a row. So I'll probably bring this all the way to the top. This part's really fun. I hope you guys enjoy it. You'll have to let me know. Like it's fun for me, but if you haven't painted a lot, maybe it's not as fun. <laughs> I don't know. I think it would be I'm trying to remember how students liked it. I didn't do a lot of this in the live classes. What's that? The dashy stuff in the background. Oh, yeah. I do feel like I need it a little lighter. So now I'm going to just kind of go this way for a while, following this curve. And I've got room in here for a few. Maybe under here. Not too many. Under here, just follow the curve of this big spiral till I get up in here. Because I'm encountering a star and around the stars I really do like to do at least like three dash three dashes thick around here maybe even more here I might follow the landscape the curvature of that landscape there you probably zoom in a little Paul There we go. Now I'm going to go around this star. It's organized chaos. <laughs> now I'm going to go up here above and I'm going to start by going around the star. And then I'm going to follow the curve of this. All the way up to the top of the canvas. Now I'm not pressing hard when I do this, it's just really light. I want thin brush strokes for the most part. You can have some of them be thicker. I, for myself, I, I tend to like the thinner ones, but I think it wouldn't be a bad thing if I went through and made some a little thicker. But there we go. So there, now we've got a lot of movement in the sky. I feel like it has a little more than the original. Yeah, I think I made the... The dash is a little bit finer and maybe a little lighter on this one I'm painting right now. Okay, I'm gonna wash this brush. I feel like I didn't get it totally clean. Let me move this out of the way for a second. We're going to paint the tree on now. Now this is a, um, actually let me, let me touch up my, do you have any orange left over there? <laughs> oh, yours is coral. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. I mean, we're using the exact same colors, right? Oops, that means a little too red. Dang, I need some of your yellow. Stealing from Paul. 
I just wanted to get a second coat of my moon, which is going to be really red just because I, I ran out of yellow. And it's not a big deal. I could get up and go get some from across the room, but I'm just going to have more red in my moon. Sometimes it's just the way it is. The painting is planning itself. I should be using my small brush to do this, but I'm not. There we go. Look at me trying to over perfect it. Okay, stop. Okay, so what we're going to do now is paint the tree. So uh, this is, let's zoom out just a click, Paul. Maybe you should hand me the remote so I'm not having to ask you to do it. Okay, so this is a, a cypress tree. It's Van Gogh's version of a cypress tree, just like it's Van Gogh's version of the stars and moon. And it is shaped a lot like a flame. So when I painted, like, I did like a beach bonfire painting once, and that's exactly how I painted the, the bonfire. It looked a lot like that. So I will grab my piece of paper, which is getting very <laughs> filled. Let me set this aside. So here's the ground. And this goes off the bottom of the canvas. So what I do usually is I'll start with kind of a rounded, it's almost like you're drawing like a, a rounded long skinny teardrop that goes to, oops, I'm off the camera. <laughs> Way to go. <laughs> so yeah, this goes off the bottom of the canvas. My paper's folded weird. So it's like we're drawing kind of a long skinny teardrop that we add to. So then from this, You'll add like little sticks that poke up. It's almost kind of like a scary tree, actually. Halloween tree. And then on uh, his original, he has this, I don't know if it's a secondary tree or part of the same tree, but he has, I just think of it as a secondary shorter tree. And yeah, you'll use your little brush to add a lot of these things that grow up and out. So you see how it, it resembles a fire. Sweet. Okay, let's mix our color. We are going to make dark purple again. It's the same color as we used in the background. I think we did add, let's see here. Yeah. Okay. I'm using everything but white. <laughs> Blue and red. And what would I use? I'm trying to think what I would use to mute this down if you wanted to make it a slightly different muted shade. I think the yellow would lighten it too much, so maybe there really isn't one color. Yeah, put the green in there. I there might are two lighten secondary it. colors. No, it doesn't. Look, uh, look at mine. I've got everybody in the pool. Okay, so you can add a little of this green to this, which will tone it slightly and make it a slightly different color than what's going on back here. And just add a bit at a time, because if you do a bunch at once, then you might have to keep adjusting and readjusting. Okay, so there, it's it's a slightly different purple. I'm going to set this big brush aside with the paint on it, because I'll probably use it to fill in some stuff. Now, brush-wise, either of these two, your four or your eight. Number eight is my bestie, so I'm going to use that one. Uh, go ahead and dip it in the paint and take a deep breath. You can do this. We got it. It's over here. Kind of look at your sky, where it's going to go over. Do you want it to cut through some stars? Maybe you have a star here you don't like or over here you don't like. Or maybe you don't want it to cut through. Like I feel like I like these stars, so I'm going to put mine. But I don't want it to be too close to center, so I think I'm going to, I'm going to end up probably covering some of that star. So I'm going to start with this. Using the thin edge of my brush, just kind of rounded line down here. I'm going to come up and silhouette against this swirl, and it can go real high. If your hand shakes, that's good. That's actually the, the look we want here. And now I'm going to come up the other side. So I get that sort of elongated teardrop shape I was talking about. 
getting closer and closer to that original line and then I want it to join in and become a single line. And now just use your brush and fill that in for now. Down here I can make it come out a little wider because remember I, I didn't want to really cover up my star there and I think I succeeded. But I also don't want it to be, I want it to be a little heavier to the left. So this is a way I'm going to trick, trick myself, <laughs> trick the viewer. And I'm actually going to clean this up too because it looks really bulgy and weird right now. But for now, just fill it in. I'm going to take my smaller brush. So I'm going to use my, my smallest round brush. I do like to add, <clears throat> excuse me, I like to add a drop of water to the paint to make it a little more fluid with this particular brush. And right here, I'm going to come up with a wobbly line that crosses the horizon. And it's almost like I'm doing a mini version of this. It's just sort of attached on here like a parasite. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to do, these are going pretty much straight up, but they are breaking away from the main body of the tree. Could do a Halloween version of this. It just reminds me of a Halloween tree. It's kind of, like I said, kind of spooky. Do you think Tim Burton was inspired by this painting? You know, he might have been. He uses a lot of swirls and that kind of thing. Okay, now I'm going to make this secondary part that I thought was maybe a smaller tree. It's just butted up against this one. So I'm going to round out down here and just come up. It just kind of curves over. You can use a smaller brush. Like this is kind of chunky because I'm using this bigger brush. This is very Tim Burton looking. No, you'll never unsee it. <laughs> it's true. Thanks, Paul. You're welcome. So that looks a little wonky to me. And I'm going to just do what I can with it. I'm going to come up here. And add my little breakaway, breakaway pieces, branches, whatever. I feel like the one on my original was really good. This one is okay. <laughs> it will work. How about that? It will work. This one's just a... <laughs> It's kind of in its own little world. Welcome to my world. <laughs> okay. Okay, it's somewhat, <laughs> somewhat Van Gogh meets Tim Burton, but we're going to go with it. I think on mine, I just over curved this a bit on the new one and I made the base of this tree really big. It's okay though. We are going to add some highlights to this which can actually help thin it out because right now it just looks like I cut out a piece of construction paper and pasted it on here. It needs to flow with the rest of the painting but it needs to dry a bit before I do anything with that. So now is a great opportunity for us to paint the little tiny stars. Now this is where I, I did something that Van Gogh does not have. I don't believe he has individual dot stars, the little white dots. So it's optional. You can leave those off. It was something I considered. He does not. I considered leaving them off, but I, in the end, I, you know, I, 
I'm a star person, so I added them in. So those of you who've painted with us before, you'll know you'd use your smallest brush and you use the handle, dot it in the white paint, pick up the little dot of white, and then as you stamp these on, they get smaller and smaller. And after you do about five or six of them, you'll have to re-dip your brush. Now you can dab your brush on your palette a couple times if you want to start with a smaller star, because the first one ends up being pretty big. And they can be in between these swirls. It's a very fantasy painting. Fantastical, the fantastical world of Van Gogh. I do love teaching this one. I was super excited on the way here down to the video studio because I love teaching this one and I love painting it. I don't think I'll ever get tired of painting it. Every time I do it, it's a little bit different too. I feel like I need some in there. Okay. Woohoo! Gonna clean off that brush. You know, uh, if you haven't washed your biggest brush, I didn't really use it much here. I didn't use it at all actually till right now. So make sure you wash that off. I don't want that to dry with paint on it. And now I'm gonna go back to this tree and see if I can clean it up a bit with some highlights. Let's zoom in just a bit. So we'll get the tree up close and personal. Uh, you can go back a bit. Actually, then this is fine. This is fine. I have green and blue highlighting on the tree. It's very subtle because when I painted it on, this purple was still wet and I just ended up going with it because I thought, you know, it's kind of nice. It's subtle. Um, I feel like the green to use here to be safe at first is your, your green that was made with the blue and yellow, not this green apple. I think we will use a little bit of this, but I'm going to actually use my number four brush. You could use your number eight if you want, but uh, number four is the one I want to use. And I need to mix up a little blue, a little yellow. So I get that original grass green, the darker one that was in here. And I think that was like two or three parts yellow to one part blue. I have hardly any yellow to work with, so. Just doing little dashes along this left side. Ugh, barely any. The universe doesn't want me to put a lot of yellow in here. <laughs> now, I'm not going to wash my brush. I'm going to dip it in this green apple, wipe some of it off so I have just a little bit. This purple is still wet for me, so this is working nice in that it's blending together and not making that green stand out like a sore thumb. Because we don't, we want it to look different than the grass. We want these highlights to be more subtle so that it's not competing with the grass. I'm going to switch to blue in just a minute. So this is a great color to use, these highlights, to thin out any wonky branches. Like that looks better already, even though it's still funky. It looks way better with the highlight on it. And now I'm going to actually, since this side I, I imagine is being more in the dark because our moon is way up here in the um, top right corner, I'm going to put blue down in there. So you want to wash your brush. And I did use just the straight cobalt blue. So just dip it right in there. And same thing, you just do the same technique. Now I do like to kind of let the two mingle together a bit so it's not just half and half. So I'll bring some blue over here, a few subtle streaks so that, like I said, it's not just half and half. If it's not showing and up, I can't talk. If it's not showing <laughs> up enough for you, you could add just the tiniest bit of white to this. Let's see what that would look like. 
so it's close to the dash color we did in the sky. And there you can see it's a bit later. This one big wet spot right here just doesn't want to take any paint. That's okay. I think it means I need to stop. All right, Paul, let's zoom out, sign this baby. Hold on, I'm not we'll quite put our Van Gogh on it. <laughs> so have a look at this and determine, is there anything on here that you want to add more color to or make more subtle? Looking at mine, it looks pretty close to the original. I think a lot of times when I'm painting live, I tend to paint more. So like you can look at the grass, the comparison, there's a lot more going on here. And uh, my streaks, I have a lot more color going on in there, a little more fine. It's funny how that, how thing like just different setting will change it up for you. But I, I feel like this is in a good spot and I like the way it turned out. My tree's a little funky, but I think it'll grow on me. <laughs> and what I want to do now is sign it. So you'll use your smallest brush for a signature, or you can use a Sharpie marker too, or like if you have a, one of those metallic markers, that would be fun. Color-wise, um, I'll probably use red, because it'll stand out against the green, but it's also not gonna be like super bright and light. I mean, it'll be bright, but it won't be light. <laughs> and I'm just gonna put my initials down here. My little loopy initials I designed years ago to make it easy to sign paintings fast. Actually, funny little story behind this signature. I used to be one of the uh, like head servers at Olive Garden. I did trained all the people and I was there late at night and I'd check them out and make sure they did all their chores. <laughs> and I had to, they had to roll silverware and they had to come show it to me that they rolled like 30 pieces of silverware in the napkins. And I had to sign do my initials to sign that they did it. So, you know, they, they can't leave until, it's just what something the management said. Can't leave until the head server's uh, signature's on there. And I had so many to sign every single night. So I just designed this really quick little loopy signature and it just sort of became my thing. <laughs> this is my Olive Garden signature. Oh, <laughs> so there we go. Van Gogh. That was fun, I enjoyed it. We'll show Paul's in just a second here. Hopefully you guys had fun watching it. Hopefully you'll have fun painting along with it. Or if you did paint along tonight, bravo. And we'd love to see your paintings um, on our group page on Facebook, Go Box Art Crate, if you choose to paint them. There's something I just realized I forgot. It's really easy to add in. What is it? <laughs> this part. Oh, I put it on mine. I did add it in way late. And I, it was one of those things that I, um, wasn't going to add. It is in the original painting. It's just, I don't even know what kind of landform it is because it's really funky shaped. I, I can add it on just so you guys can see how to do it. Uh, yeah, palette. I need dark purple. So it's, it's the dark purple color. It's like something's missing. Wait painting after I signed it. Ooh. Let's see. Let's see how that I butcher this. <laughs> oh, you won't. I might tone that with the green again. Maybe. So yeah, I'm not sure what um, he was intending for this particular area. Just uh, I've always thought of it as like a rock face. Let's have a look at it again. Right there. Let's replicate it if you want to. So I've got my number eight brush in hand. Any of the smaller brushes will work just fine. I'm gonna start off by doing a little scoop just above this, come down into the color, and then it comes out to a little weird point. And then it scoops in. It took me a bit to, to get this right. I had to sort of reshape it. If you want to do just a sloping hill without this funky little point, I would say go for it. Um, in fact, I'm going to show you how you can convert it because 
This is really strange. I'm sure his like looks amazing. Have we ever hung our palette? No. <laughs> um, but we have definitely, when we had the studio, we definitely had people that would take their palette sheets home. <laughs> I had that happen a few times. Did you? Or their paper no, towel? No, I never once had that. I had people take I had their... people laugh about the yeah. style. But I had people take their paper towels home. We would laugh too. how it's like one of those roar shark tests. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, the, you can see if I pick up a smaller brush, I'd probably get this a little bit better. But you can see that the shape of it's really strange. And I think the best way, if we really don't like it, which I don't like mine, I'm going to turn this into just a, a hill. That's better. Look at that. <clears throat> Fixed it. <laughs> and I could bring this down a little further. So it's kind of a sharp slope. And then if you really want to uh, get really into the whole painting, you can, you know, have a look at how he painted the village down there. I think that's, that's an undertaking, but if you're a, someone who really likes to paint detail stuff, go for it. I mean, the worst that can happen is you just don't like it and you paint over that part. So let's have a look. Are you done so we can show yours? Yeah. Paul's is very colorful, very different than mine as usual styles are so very different <laughs> I like it yeah it's very um, like a mix of Monet and Van Gogh this is all Van Gogh-ish down here very Van Gogh down in there you've got that really good and um, the color I like all the colors in the sky I, at first when I saw you working on it I thought oh my gosh it's gonna end up really muddy what's he up to over there and then I see you turned it around yeah I'm not too worried about it ever I was really worried about it <laughs> just kidding no it looks great I like it it seems I like the moon area a lot actually it seems really soft yeah but that's that's the style of starry night yeah so I tend to paint with a, a lot more paint on my brush and uh, cleaner like more precision type i think you swinging uh, your mug in is kind of throwing the autofocus okay, sorry off. <laughs> um, i didn't mean to i was just swinging my chair um so yeah I, I tend to paint with more precision type lines which to me drives me crazy i really want to paint a lot looser like i love all this down here and this is this is what i would want to achieve but my style is just different Yep. Something, it's a good thing for me to work on, though. I feel like there's always stuff to work on when you're a painter. Even if you've been painting for 30 years, there's always more you can do, more you can try, more experimenting. Change things up. You might find something that is absolutely your style. So I think that, yeah. The, Thank you, Diana. Yeah. Oh, Mark wants to know if you have ever... Oh, you asked yeah. that, the palette. Yeah. <laughs> I think that, that, like tonight, when I said I was going to do my spin on it, it was more to show that not how different my painting is than yours, but how different it can be and it's okay. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of times, you know, we've talked about this, I think, in the broadcast before where people get concerned about replicating it exactly. And, you know, you can tell we both painted the same painting, but we got completely different results. And yeah. that's okay. It's okay. All right. I'm going to bring <laughs> us back. Ready? Here okay. we come. Hey. Hello. We're back. We are back and ready to sign off until next week. So yep. let's show your painting. It's right behind you. Next week we are visiting the coast. <laughs> Not for real in the painting world. We're painting Paul's, uh, I think it's called Seaside Daffodils. Yeah. And so this is the fun. first March that I haven't done like a really Irish theme. Like this is kind of as close Kind of close to an Irish theme, I guess. You've got the bright green down there. I do, I do. <laughs> and the coast. This could be in Ireland. Yeah, I kind of wanted I assume it. daffodils grow there. <laughs> yeah, I wanted it to kind of feel like maybe it could be, just because of old St. Patrick's Day and stuff like that. I mean, it's, but I think, you know, we dealt with this in the studio, trying to do like a painting that's specifically like a St. Patrick's Day or Easter or whatever holiday it is really difficult to do. Yeah. And, and make a painting that looks... Um, Classical? 
<laughs> that's a, you know, I mean, we've seen examples of, you know, like, oh, here's a pot of gold with a rainbow and here's leprechaun feet sticking out behind the rock. I mean, it's just like, <laughs> I think we did one, I think I did one once that had a little, little Pint? tiny pot of gold that was like, yay oh, yeah, big, yeah. just kind of hidden. Yeah, you did. Um, and it was an optional thing just for fun. Um, and that's kind of like what I think, like, we both like to do is like, if we're going to do something that's. Uh, like that we guys like to do a little hidden thing instead of like here yeah. it is you know so kim um your wedding flower was daffodils is that right i think i remember you saying that that's really cool i guess we designed this one for you too so i'll, I'll tell you i'll give you guys a heads up though on this i think painting flowers like big flowers like this is a little bit tricky because if you are type a and really rigid in how you paint it's going to be really easy to over detail it. And flowers need to be kind of soft. And Oh, paint a few Scottish thistles in between. We'll have to look that up. Yeah, for sure. We can do that. <laughs> yep, we really are waiting We'll for have it. plenty of time. <laughs> we'll have plenty of time. This painting actually goes pretty fast. Yeah, I think it'll be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Paul actually didn't like it. I wasn't sure about it, but then it's grown on me. Mm -hmm. I think the only thing that... Uh, like we, flowers, it's grown. <laughs> the only thing we might change is we might give a little more attention to the highlights in the ocean. Oh, give it some shimmer. Yeah, a little, a little more shimmer. More. It was kind of almost an afterthought. I actually like... This is something you do often. I like this glowy... You have so many paintings where you've done that glowy green down there, and I like it. It's sparkly glowy. Sparkly glowy. So... <laughs> Yeah, this was fun, actually. I'm looking forward to teaching this one because there are some little, like, almost Monet-like details in there. Um, but anyway, so... I we'll will have fun with that one. So Ooh. we will be here next Friday, same time, 5.30 PST. So wherever you're at, just look up PST and add or subtract some hours. <laughs> so 8.30 Eastern time. So it's somewhere between 5.30 and 8.30, depending on what part of the continent you're on. <laughs> yeah. And if you had fun and you enjoy painting in this way, um, like, subscribe, all that stuff. Uh, we do have a Patreon you can join, mm -hmm. and the links are all down below. Yep. And please join our Facebook group page. Uh, we love having people on there and sharing You know, we're starting to see some people the art. Uh, sharing uh, their own paintings, too, which mm -hmm. is cool. And, and yeah, you can do that. You can absolutely. share your own paintings that you have not done with the subscription, it's more about showing your advancements in art. Yeah, and if you guys want, like, if if you want critiques and stuff like that, by all means, you know, we will we can do that. Um, I think critiquing is one of the hardest things when you're taking art classes, like yeah. at a, in a college level, because critiquing is supposed to be very honest, um, and. I tend to also to like find the good things and try to encourage people to play up the good things rather than pointing out like oh this is rather bad. than being Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> yeah. Although I can go Gordon Ramsay if you want me to. So. No, there's always good things, and that's whenever I do art. There's always strong points and parts where I'm like, yeah, I'd probably do that differently next time, or I may expand on that a little further. But because if you share your paintings on your own Facebook or Instagram, your friends are all going to tell you it's wonderful. Yeah. You and, need... that, and that's fine. You're doing a wonderful job just by doing it. Yeah. Um, but if you really want to build, sometimes you got to get a little bit of feedback. Yeah, and just ask for feedback. We're not going to, like, come off and be like... No. Like, when you post your painting, we're not going to be like, your tree's really weird. Yeah, unless, <laughs> unless be... you specifically ask us for... And we wouldn't say that anyway. Yeah. Even if you ask for uh, feedback, we just look at it really close and, you know, figure out what, 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 what I think is, what would I do different mm -hmm. if that were my painting? Yep. So... Well, we enjoyed this tonight. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy painting. Thank you for joining us and hope to see you all next week and keep painting. Yeah. Thanks again. Cheers. We'll see, cheers. And what do we say? For There's no like St. Patrick's Day like greeting, is there? There probably is. Down with the serpents. <laughs> Down with the serpents. <laughs> <laughs> all right, everybody. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.